This week's proud sponsors of the episode are Murphy & Young Limited. They design, manufacture, supply and erect bespoke timber kit houses and summer houses. You can visit them at murphyandyoungltd.co.uk or contact them at info at murphyandyoungltd.co.uk If you're looking for any information, if you've got any projects they can help you with, then just give them a shout. The lads are top notch. Hope you enjoy the episode. Cheers. Alright everybody, welcome to episode 12 of the Roundup. Last weekend we've got big games, good results, two managers left their post today, testimonial goals for superstar football players. I mean, Cashy, that is, mate, you've actually seen his goal today. I'm, <laughs> I'll tell you, mate, no can you've actually seen, you've actually seen uh, Paul Fry's you've actually seen his goal today. Don't rub it in, mate, I know, I've heard of belters, mate, I'm just devastated. Absolute beauty. I mean, Hold on the, a minute, hold on a minute, mate, right? Alright. Who's that? Well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, you still kicking a boy, you mean? <laughs> oh, you were a you were a player, by the way, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you were a player. You still kicking a boy, mate. <laughs> <laughs> remember that video? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> you don't remember that video? Was going about? And it was a wee guy kicked on. And he was a football manager. No. <laughs> um... You always see, you always go out the pub. Oh, by the way, son, you still kicking. Abortion, you're a player, mate. I'm talking about how good their goals are. That the pale in comparison to that that piece of magnificent skill for myself. I honestly, mate, I'll, pay, I'll paint a picture for you. All gets swung in. I'm at a back post at a, an impossible angle. Take a beautiful first touch, drop the left shoulder. The whole team go one way, I go the other. See the keepers just off his line. Clip it beautifully, just weighted perfectly. I mean, it's all about the angles and the weight, and it just hits the inside of the post and goes in. It was, it was gorgeous, but I'll not talk about it anymore, right? Let's move on. It was a great Have day. You for, done your that was, it was a great day for Big John. Uh, it's a great mate, day the for reason, the, reason, the reason I've got the hat on and all, mate, I look, I mean, I look like cast away, mate. See, you. okay, <laughs> Tom <laughs> Hanks, mate. I'm running about deluded, mate. I'm at the Wayne's Ball, mate, calling it Wilson and all. Wilson. <laughs> Out of here, mate. I'm going <laughs> Isolation's nearly over, mate. Yes, mate. Right, let's move on here. Let's go. Mate. Premier League, Blantyre now, coming all three. Bonnet and now, Darvel five, Glenafton one, Pollock one, Coburnley two, Cumnock nil, Robroy two, Meda one, Rossville one, Bember five, Rutherglen one, Beath nil, Trin three, Large one, Claybank nil, Talbot two. First two games, mate, we'll just get straight on here. Glenafton won, Pollock won, and Rossville won, Bember five. Tony McInally and Dyack no longer in a job. Two two um two good clubs looking for managers now. Aye, mate, two good clubs and just shows you the football, mate, and that was just the two of them have obviously two clubs have been going through probably a wee spell where they're maybe not picking up as many results as what what they want, but it's, a, it's, a, it's sad and it's a shame, mate, because we're in the game ourselves. Not I mean, you don't want to see anybody either lose their job or, or move on for their job. Uh, but unfortunately, that's just the way football is. But Dyax and that, are, he'll, he'll pick up an our job. He's always a good manager. And Tony and Branco and all the backroom staff they come up, that were at come up are all outstanding, achieved everything at this grade or a lot in this grade. So they're not gonna they're not gonna probably boot the game for long, but they're two good clubs that are gonna looking for a manager. So it's a great opportunity for somebody whether they know they whether they know they go for a tried and tested name or whether they, they go a wee bit more outside the box, we'll just need to wait and see. I know, mate. I actually realised I forgot the Friday night game. Uh Harrowford beating Paul winning two 0 was it? Aye, two 0 mate. Aye. Totally, mate. Har- Harlford's a team that we've we've not really spoke much about, and that that's no fair on them because Dan Henderson doing a tremendous, tremendous job. The boys down there are doing brilliant. They Friday night games seem to get the best out of that team. They seem to uh-huh. win the Friday night games. Uh, but that same beat they beat Clyde Bank away, they beat Darvo at home, they beat Cowan in away. So they're a good side, mate. Boy Whitaker's up there scoring a couple of goals again. Good player. Um, so hats off to Darren Henderson and the, and the boys at Hurlford because they've had a fantastic season so far because by all accounts they've lost a lot of players and during the close season. So for him to get 
that quality of players in and be where they are the new and having a tremendous season. So well done to Hurlford and about time that they get a good shout out on the show, mate. I mean, um, they're doing really well. I think is the one they're getting. They've got a few games in hand on uh, some of the teams above them. They win them. They're right in the mix. They're, yeah, well, they're still going to be too far away, I think, for the Talbot. He made a dent, but they're going to be in a position where they could be looking at third or fourth in the league. So it's they're showing they're a really good side. And it, one we've no special yeah. there, but no, definitely and they deserve. They deserve all the credit. Their management deserve all the credit. Their players deserve a tremendous amount of credit. They've got good players there. They're looking like a very good side and well done to them, mate. Um, moving on to the biggest game in the, the division, I'd say yesterday was Clyde Bank and the Talbot. I went yeah. down with my dad and the wee man. The wee man was running about like an absolute lunatic, so I didn't get to watch it particularly closely. But my view on it was um, Clyde Bank really dominated possession. Quite, quite kind of had a lot of the ball in the Talbot's half. But did very little bit. We, uh, we, Lee McGonagall, did really well at White, same with Lee Gallagher, and they were getting boys in the boat. There just didn't seem to be any end product for them. Big Leishman came out and just cleaned up everything. Yeah, I've seen that. The Talbot got my part, but almost every time they got part, they looked like scoring. I mean, I'd, I'd have said if you were based on football, Claybank were a better side, but every time the Talbot went up my part, it just looked so dangerous. Mm-hmm. That's the thing, mate. It's many times have we seen it, teams can keep a lot of possession in that but unless you're doing something really meaningful in the game then it's no it's, it's, it's immaterial in it but Clyde Bank have been going great guns and, and doing really well and that's a, that's a tough game but, but it just sounds as if it's t- typical tal but just get in there pick up the result keep a clean sheet did see a couple of, uh, couple of wee snippets here on Twitter even the bank even their second goal man it all comes with Big Leishman taking a taking a catch and then just he's froze unbelievable, yeah. mate. Matt, Off wide line sets it away, and then they've got the by line. Good cross. He da looked as if it was behind the line. I don't know if it was. I don't know. We've no no we've no get the vault list uh, yet. I was at, I was at the other end. I couldn't couldn't tell. But that's what me and my old man were talking about. Like we were literally right behind Leishman's goal. Mm-hmm. Everything he came, he took, and his throw is ridiculous, man. It's so accurate, and I just. Zinging oh, balls out to people. It's the way it, mate. It's Aye. the way it because it's absolutely it's right into the player's path. It's not in his feet, it's in his path. The, the wingers took it well for Tal, but took it in his stride, and it's a good goal. But listen, Clyde Bank have had a tremendous couple of weeks, mate. Let's not take it away from them. They'll be disappointed by that. Moff will be disappointed, and everybody there will be because it's, it's a big game. You want to win. Massive crowd there, a thousand again, a thousand and three. I think it was brilliant. Brilliant for the level. There was more of that yesterday than there was at the uh, Elgin game. Was there? Aye, mate. There was definitely more of that yesterday. Um, it was a great turn out. Shows Aye. you, mate. I've seen the Bankies have signed up really Lee on a new deal. Aye, in Austria. Good that's a bit of good news for them. Know, he's, a very, a good he's a very good player. The yeah. Good day for the Talbot yesterday. Obviously, Friday night, go in and losing. So that's points for them to drop further back. Pollock draw McGlynn after. And that's three at the last six they've drawn. Uh, it's mm-hmm. just going to... They're still not losing, but they've had that wee, that wee dip in form that I suppose you expect everybody to have. The Talbot are a point clear with two games in hand, and the way they go, that could be seven points quite easily. Um, for me, a big result, we've kind of touched on it with Tony leaving. Coburnley beating Cumnock 2-0, that was massive for Tam and Sean and Owen to get that win there. Well, not a wee bit of momentum match. That's two wins in the bounce. A good away win to Glen Afton last week, and then now they've, they've followed that up with a good one at home against Cumnock. Um, so they're, they're dragging themselves right, right back in the mix. And with Tommy and Dinky and Atterdale down there, they're, they're getting, a, they're getting a, the feel good factor. It looks like it looks like they're getting the fans are on side, and obviously the committee and that will all be on side, and the players are on side. So That'll make them a hard team to go and beat the new. Um, I think it's a cup game they've got next week. Um, they're probably not wanting a cup game. They're wanting an early no, game. Probably they're building up a wee bit, of, wee bit of steam. So they're not wanting a cup game. Kind of switches off for the league as well. So they're doing, they've, they've, they've gave themselves an opportunity. Big thing for me in the league, that league this week, there's been a lot of the teams running out down there have done well. And like, you've had the likes of Cumbernauld. If that's the only downside for Coburnley is Cumbernauld have won, Kirky Rob Roy, and that have won and all because they're good results for them and all. 
Uh, I was just about to touch on that the Rob Roy game. I was a cracking result beating the Meda 2-1. The Meda are obviously Brilliant, a good side. Um, and obviously we lost we Ben Daly to Rob Roy. He started the game. I've seen a wee chance. He's had his, he's, he's probably he's, he's got to score that. It's probably came a bit too early in the game if, if, you, if you want to defend him on that. He did, but he's went there. He's picked up a great result. That's what happens, but nah, I should probably go somewhere, mate. They just, they, they, <laughs> That's how he's talking nah, but... Uh, Great result, great result for Cumbernauld because we've been talking highly about the Meda and how well they've been doing. Um, so, hat, brilliant for Kirky Rob Roy. It's a, it's a good win and it just gives them a wee jag because they've had a wee disappointing. They had a big disappointing result last week, man, 5-0, do you know what I mean? So, to bounce mm-hmm. back and beat the Meda shows shows a bit of character, especially with them having such a young team down there. It shows a bit of character. Last thing, I was talking to Max the other day and he was saying it was a good result and the team played well. And that's what he was touching on. He says, like, it's a lot of young players in the team. So it's it's one of the ones. See if they can keep them all and help them progress. And see in the next two or three years, they could end up with a good yeah. side. Um, yeah. Good result for Glen Cairn beating Bead. Um, I didn't get a chance to talk to Butch too much today, but I think he was uh, a bit disappointed. Um, Darvel, 6 out of 6, continuing this great run, beating Bonnet in mm-hmm. 5 now. They look like they're really finding a bit of form again. Um, uh, that's a good result because because Bonnington picked out a good result against Blantyre last week, so their confidence would have been up. But for Darvo to go down win five 0 it shows you the shows you uh, the quality that they've got in there. Um, moving on to Conference A, Bills Hill now, Arthley six, Craig Mart six, Sockles one, the Borough two, Les Mahigo two, Luger one, Mary Hill two. Shots one, Garvin nil, Whitlitz two, and Muirkirk one. Arthurly, again, just absolutely ruthless six nil. I know Bells Hill. We spoke about it last week. It's about a transition period for them, or a big transition period for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Arthurly continuing to win. Shots getting a one nil win against Garvin. Um, Aye, that's that yeah. and all. Oh, that Danny Burns, hundred goals, mate, for shots. Is that right. Well done, Danny. Aye, Aye Danny Burns, mate. He's He's a legend in there, obviously, now. He probably has been before the game, but that's his 100th goal, so I think it's only fair that he gets a wee shout this week I because to score 100 goals for one club is a tremendous achievement, and he's went and done it. He's went he's went back there for a gap Cairn this season, and he's, they've won one now, so it's the winner, and he's 100th goal, so well done to them. Nice one, well done, mate. Uh, they're sitting um, top of the league now, two points clear, Arthur, but Arthur they've got three games in hand it's getting yeah. to that way the new after Arthur beating shots twice it's hard to see them no going to go and win that um, yeah what was the one I was looking at Whitlitz 2-1 um, Whitlitz are actually having a right good spell now. it's the fifth one in the bounds Muirkirk really having a, a poor spell they've only won one at the last six and it's kind of looking like they could be relegation candidates like I predicted but I don't think that'll happen to be fair but um, nah there's too much there's too much quality down there. they've got good They've got good players, as I've as I've said before, mate. It's just they're just maybe going through a wee bad spell, uh, which I only I only know too well how that can happen. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, Mary Hill beating Luger two one. Even though it's a defeat for Luger, shows the improvement they've had. A late aye. Because uh, Mary Hill had a decent side, and that was um, another close game where they just seem to be really turning turning the table, uh, turning the corner now. I was obviously because I was in isolation, as as probably the whole world knows now. <laughs> but uh, I was obviously just constant on Twitter for the full time through. That actually seemed on Twitter for the, the Twitter feeds on Mary Hill that it was a good game. It's like penalties and chances and penalties not being gained in that. So I would say that look at look at if look at if on a different side now. They're no. They're not easy to go and get points again. So Mary Hill for being one doing they've done well there to go and win the game and then leaving there with the three points. So that's a good good that's, result. That's four out of the last five result. Mary Hill have won as well. Aye, aye, aye. They're doing well, mate. They're doing, <laughs> it's a good run. Doing very uh, well. Craig Mark beating Solcoat six one after Solcoat said that horrendous week last week. Um speaking to Big Gunny, the coach at Solcoats, um the other day there, as you know. They were t- he was telling us that they've actually had to be playing a an outfield player in goals, which is something that we'll get to yourselves in a minute as well. It's just, I think it's a hard season for them. For uh, him and Andy are working really hard to get players in, and it's just one of the ones they're just going to need to persist. It's, 
it's difficult in it because you're trying to you're trying to sell you're trying to sell the club to players and the problem is what they've got because only experience you can experience it at every level. Always just go on the internet or just go and look at what a team's results are, go and look no. at their Twitter and all that. So boys are fully aware of a situation. So that's the difficult thing they've got to now, do you know what I mean? It's like so I hope and and and, and I hope and you know I'm I'm gunning for them, do you know what I mean? I want them I want them to do well. So fingers crossed that they can they can pick up. Aye. Moving on to conference B, our dear two St. Carrick's four, Canvas line four, new men's nil. Taluk nil, Thornywood five, Dorai nil, Glasgow United one, Greenock three, Ashfield one, Renfrew six, Support two, Dart Cairn six, Royal Albert one. Obviously, as the whole world knows, you were not there yesterday, but what was the feedback? I know you were um, four yourself and the other three goalkeepers who were potentially able to play. I think he's good play, so he's had an up. Was it Burns that played in goals? No, it was uh, Anton Burnley. Anton Burnley, that's the thing, mate. We've got we've got well, we young Ben who was working, but Ben's going to be moving on anyway. And then our under twenties goalie was working, and then I'm isolating with obviously COVID. And then prior the morning of the game is injured and ill, so four options we should have had, and none of them could play. I'm disappointed myself, you know what I mean? But I wanted to just go and play, but that would have been irresponsible. So for one time only, I've actually <laughs> been a responsible man. But <laughs> no, listen, it's disappointing. It's hard because we've had to play a player in goal. We've been doing it to the bare bones. Listen, I'm not going to make excuses because Dina could have won the game and they're a good side and, and Doyley's, Doyley's getting getting a turn out the boys now. And... Um, it wasn't good for us. We went down and we went down with basically 10, 10 fit players. We've drafted in three for the 20s and that. By all accounts, the gaffer said we were doing really well. Our, our, our centre half, James Mars, took a really bad heat knock. He's had to go off, so we've had to put one of the, the young boys in. And we've been all right. And right up to half time, we've then we've scored an OG. And then I think it's just knocked the stuff in. No. And then they've, they've scored. And I uh, listen, mate. I, I don't want to talk too much about it because I feel as if I, I talk a lot about Ashfield and it's disappointing for us. It's been a tough week. We've lost a few players. Then Saturday's a tough one to take, having to play an outfield player in goal. But listen, it's we've got a lot of boys out injured and early next week or so we'll hopefully be getting them back and we're working hard to try and get a, a couple in as well. So we'll see what happens. But we've still got, we've still got good quality in the club. That's the disappointing thing. We've got good players there that are better than what the results are showing. So, at the end of the day, the buck stops with Maxie and myself. We need to get we need to get the boys gone. We've got a big we've got a big week or two ahead, mate. So we need to kick on again, mate. Okay, that's it, mate. That's it. Um our dear St. Gaddox, four two to St. Gaddox. By all accounts a decent game. Um but St. Gaddox getting the victory. I know Sean will be disappointed because that's four in the bounce they've lost in the league now. Um St. Carrots won four of the last five. I still think the way things are going the new with Canvas Lang beating New Mains 4 0, which was good for New Mains to see that it was a better result in terms of score line for last week. I still think Canvas Lang are going to have too much, but at the same time, it's only a game or two and it can all switch. Aye, ah, it's um, St. Carrots has a good result because RD have got a bit about them, so they would have wanted to bounce back after the Greenock game. St. Carrots, for some reason, they're like winning 4 2. I think that's, that's what they beat. That's the right was was, and I, why would they beat Del Rai and then they beat Ardia for two? It's, it's strange in that respect, but Ardia looks like they've got, got themselves back in with an off a chance to three two, and then St Caddox I think have then scored towards the end to make it four two. But great result for Southie and St Caddox. They're, they're 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 putting they're putting pressure as much as possible on Canvas Line. You still can't get you still can't discount Gart Cairn either. Um, with the canvas line game they've kept an clean sheet I think that boy's on course or he's matched the record now for consecutive clean sheets to boy Wilson and goal mm. I think he's something like six or seven games so they're a, they're a solid unit solid unit consecutive clean sheets um, new mains have been doing to ten men after about eight minutes or something that I've seen uh, but they just keep 
they just keep clawing on, and and it, and, it, and it's an interesting scrap between them to see who comes out in top. We we got Cairn probably and and that mix as well. But I yep. think probably between them. Formerly would another haunt me. I think formerly would be one of the informed teams in the league, mate. I think Dolzy and Nizzy deserve a tremendous amount of credit for the way their boys are going. They're scoring goals for fun. They're not conceding much, which is obviously a perfect perfect ingredient if you're a manager and it. it's a perfect formula mate if you're scoring goals and no conceding so they're one of the form teams in the league for me Aye uh, Durai another one you're seeing it with a lot of the lower down teams 1-0 at Glasgow United which isn't too bad a result they seem to be a bit like Luger for me where they're really starting to turn it round um, starting to pick up still no getting a massive amount of wins they've only won one of the last six but you see the results have went for the sevens, yeah. the eights, the nines, the tens, or whatever they were losing in the season, and they're losing by goal or two now, and it's getting quite a bit better. Jimmy, I was, talking, I was talking to the gaffer, I was talking to the Dalry gaffer last week, um, I was on the phone to him last week, and uh, Chris, he's a, he's a nice guy, and Dalry have always said it, and see, there's there's a bit of footage on that game, they were unlucky, and they had a lot of chances, mate, and boy and goal, Johnny Greer for Glasgow United, had a good game, pulled off a few good saves, so they, they, they might be disappointed they've not took something for the game, but that's a good result for Glasgow United. They've ground it out. Jimmy, Jimmy Quigley never won, mate. That's, really well. that's a good result for them. He's doing really well. He's really hit the ground running. He's getting he's getting that reaction out of the boys. The boys are playing for him. The boys are picking up results. But they've always they've always had the quality players there, mate. Uh, I think, look, Gart Cairn beating Royal Albert 6-1. That's six, that same kind of continuing that they're good on a form. It's been a lot of the tap sides when the bottom sides, and that's you're seeing the, the kind of golf the new where the tap sides are winning a lot of games. What well, should be a few games coming up where it's the kind of tapper playing against each other, so it should be quite interesting in that league. But um, moving on to Conference C, the Drum one, Persia now, East Kilbride three, Yoker one, Go South one, Bale even now, Lanark now, they're up two. Lark Hall now and Peter's Hill four, the Ants two and Wishaw two. And I feel like I'm missing the Nielsen game. Who's no, Nielsen only playing. They're not playing this weekend. No, I don't um, know. I think they were three weeks, mate, because I, I can't even remember seeing a result for them either. They don't think they were playing, mate. Oh, sorry, at least I've not missed it. The drum, 90th minute winner against Perthshire. I've seen it on uh, Twitter. They've kind of got a real. Some celebrations, wow. Uh, mate, see, see what it means to them. That's me. That's what it would mean to any team, isn't it? When you're when you're on the top of the league and it's tight and it's a tight league and you go to a you go to a, 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 a kind of not a, not a rival because it's no it's not a close rival, but there's that Glasgow rivalry there. There's a lot of boys that play for the drum that's not for the no far area for where the Shire are playing that. So it would have meant a lot to both clubs. So um, Shire are unlucky not to take the point, but. That shows character going right to the end, and the goal. The goal he's put off some saving off for the initial one. And off as well, didn't it? Um, the Shire goal he's pulled off a world day, and then they've scored the rebound. Not more frustrating, but now nah, well done to the drum and, and the other teams around about will be a bit gutted with that because they would have seen that up until how late that got, and then they've obviously got the three points. But just shows you we hope in that team that they'll never say die attitude and they keep going to the very end. Nah, it was also nice to um, to see the Rock getting a 2-0 win. Uh, first Probably game back for, for the sad loss of Paul. Um, that was a good result for them. Keeping them safe in touching distance as well. Uh, <clears throat> if they win their game in hand, they can potentially go into second place. But for me, Peter's Hill, absolutely flying. 4 now against Lark Call. Game you'd expect them to win, granted, but they're just they're really turning it on the new, I think. See if I'm being honest, I think they might be one of the only teams that can beat the drum now, the way they're playing. It's they're kinda of looking a lot better after a slow start. Aye. See see firstly on the rock me, I just I'll, I'll go touch back on that because everybody at the club there deserves a tremendous amount of credit because everything that everybody's went through, the emotion, the sadness, how raw that's been what's happened to Paul, for their players to go down and win the game is outstanding because it's quite easy for your mindset to kind of not be there and you're and on the game you're not quite at it because 
quite rightly so, your mind's elsewhere and you're hyping about other things. But fair play to Rame and, and see Paul, that's the best that's the best thing that Paul would have wanted because they boys have went and they've done the business and they've done it for him. So can I give enough credit to everybody connected with St Rock's Football Club on the, on the result on Saturday, mate. So that's that's amazing, mate. Amazing. That, that's a result that I'm that I was delighted to see. Um on Peter's Hill, flying mate. Absolute flying mate. Lockie is Lockie's boys are doing the business and as you say, mate, you are not expecting them to drop any points no. today. You just and that's that makes it very, very interesting. If they've they've put in it's, it's, it's quite, at this level it's a tremendous run. I will then thirteen wins thirteen wins on the bounce, mates. And any at any, any, any level, mate, it's unbelievable, mate. Ah, it's scary. Um Ants to all we wish you a good result for the Ants. Wish you Spurl Club are a wee bit disappointed their season. I think that's the thing, PG. You're saying that that's a the Ants will be chuffed with that, mate, but they'll probably be disappointed at the end because they've been two 0 up. Mm. They were two they've been they're two 0 up and then they've drew the game to each. So both managers will be disappointed, probably because Danny will be disappointed that his boys are two up and they can't they can't hold on to it and stay strong and see the game through. Whereas Spud will be disappointed, probably that I'd imagine this is me only imagine this is me only thing. Once they go to two each, they've probably been on the ascendancy to try and go and win the game. Um, so he would have been hoping that his boys could have went and maybe go to the third and won the game, but. At the same time, you'll be delighted with a point after being 2 0 yeah. down. So maybe the both the managers will be a wee bit tad disappointed, but each a peachy on it. Yeah. Division 4, Campbelltown 2, BSC 2, Finart 3, Harmony Row 1, Hart Hill 2, the Mighty San Pedro's 3, Coastside 0, Glenvale 1. Um, Finart beating Harmony Row. Harmony Row seem to have kind of wee dip losing in the last yeah. three, um, but it was a good result for Finart, which puts them back to after the league. The one that surprised me a bit, um, Coastside losing to Glen Bale, leaving it a goal, which fuck, I don't know if there's been any games this season they've not scored. But that's mm-hmm. um, two good wins for, for John and the Glen Bale boys in a row, beating uh, Finart and Coastside back to back. See the thing with Division 4. Division 4, all, all the teams are, all the, let's see the teams that were lower down, they're all getting better. Right. And this is this is what I always harped on to see when managers had a chance to work with their players and two sessions a week and try to get bodies back and try to maybe even add a few bodies for some clubs. The teams were always going to get better. That division's actually getting very competitive. Do you know right. that? Like, right. see it, like, there's no there's no let's like, see at the start there was a couple of teams that were maybe taking a doing at the start, but see now, you're seeing the likes of say, BSC, Campbelltown. Hart Hill, they're all getting they're getting results against the teams up up higher in the league. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's um, BSC. I mean, obviously they beat us, and then they've got a good win last week, and then getting a draw away to Campbelltown with Campbelltown improving as well after drawing with Coastside last week. Mm-hmm. The, the teams are starting to pick up. Um, I was yep. pleased. I didn't get to go to the game because I had the wee in yesterday. And it was out of Hart Hill, but it's good for us to win three two yesterday. That's us beating them two weeks in a row. I don't know why we're playing them two weeks in a row, to be honest, but um, that's us beating them. And it, it's going to be interesting next week. The big Paisley Derby, St Peter's and Glenvale, both teams. Oh, is that next week? That's aye. next weekend, mate. Aye. So it's going to be a Where good one. That's it, Renfrew. Is that good, mate? That'll be that. Hopefully that gets a good turnout because John's obviously galvanising Glenvale and St Peter's have had a, a decent season as well and, and, and building some good young players here so that, that, that'll, be, that'll be a good yeah, game. a hard game for us to be fair like our problem is we've been so hot and cold I mean 16 games one nine low seven not even drawn a game just so hot and cold where you go and beat teams and don't get me wrong apart from playing Harmony Road a 4-1 game every game we've lost has been by a goal so mm-hmm. we could probably we could probably be closer to the top but we'll know obviously but it's kind of been good to get a couple of wins back to back for the boys, and we're hoping to get some players back in. Oh. We're a bit similar to yourself. The amount of injuries we've got in is ridiculous, man. But again, speaking to most managers, everybody's in the same boat. Hey, 
I've seen it, mate. All week. I've seen Strainy talking about it after Friday night's game. I've seen the the, the worst it is. You don't want to look. You don't want to make sound excuses. as if you're a broken. Ah, you right. don't want to make excuses and sound like a broken down record. Not I mean, but it is frustrating because it's been a funny old season for probably most clubs. Right boys missing. I've never. I think cause things even like weddings and stag do's and. Boys going away for weekends and all that, man. I've, I've never seen it like it. I just don't know if it's because everything's been opened up again, but um, it's a funny, funny thing. And, and it's been it's been hard, mate. This has probably been, I'd say, this has been my toughest season. Right. Coaching our thing, man. Just, just the full thing, mate. I just, I, I found it is difficult, man. It's, it's, it's strange times. It's different times. I don't, I'm hoping that this isn't the way it's always going to be. I know. With, with boys and. Their commitment, no, we'll but... just go back to all right. You can kind of make kind of gay leeway for boys this year going away, no, that because you've not really been away for the last two years. I'd like to hope that next season things can start to go back to what they used to be, where boys yeah. are properly no, no, saying they're not committed, but fuck it, some of them have never really been committed at times. So, no, it's and, not good. I think it is that to honestly, me, I think boys are just some too many are missing, but talking about straining there, um. I've seen his attempt at an overheat kick of the... Oh, was it terrible? No, mate. I mean, I'm not kidding you, man. He nearly kicked the sun. He went that high. Did just he? Missed, just missed the ball. Uh, so... Fair play to him trying one, mate, because mate. At, the ages, at the ages that we're all getting, you try that and it doesn't come off. You could be half worked for a very long time. <laughs> it's some way down to 40 before. But, um, he, he, but... Who, who, was in, who, was in, who played in goal for the All-Stars? Strain, um, was Adam Strain there? No, straight well, he was there, but um, he's injured, so Big Dale ended up playing goals for us. Did he play the full 90? No, oh, terrible, terrible. I can't remember who came in for him uh, late Aye. on. But uh, Dale, Aye, there was a couple of really good saves, to be fair. We'd, it was a good game. I actually think that I had the hardest shift the day, because I got put on right mid, which I've not played in about 10 years, and then I had Steg Noble when I first came on, and he goes off, and then I get Ryan Doherty, who just the fittest guy in the world and then Joe Bradley and I'm like absolutely bust and then we came McLean started to drift out of my side I was like what are you doing? Absolutely yeah, good, man. Yeah, they, they drift good players always drift on to somebody they're going to get a bit of change out of yeah, I heard it was because they wanted a bit of competition they were getting a bit fed up absolutely roasting Gordon Pope mate, it's that stage. daft wee gun you had out, mate. That, that wee drill gun mate, before you went you were taking it seriously mate so there he was, man. Very pulling the muscles, so I was happy. And what, I did, what did Tucker say to you? Go, go on, get it in. What did Tucker say to you? Mate, I wasn't even going to mention it, right? But, um, no, I'm not. I mean, like, you phoned me. The first thing you phoned me is phoned me and told no, me this. If you want to make things up, that's up to you and light your view. Mate, look at your face, you're that liar. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll tell you what Tucker said. I'll tell you what Tucker said. Tucker said, in the dressing room in front of everybody, big man, you were outstanding today. And I said, I know I was outstanding on the right-hand side there, just waiting on people. Oh, but, um, my God, man. I said to Tucker, I know I was like, uh, do you know, Tucker, you've got 100% record um, managing in games where I've played for you. So that's one. Yeah, see the, the best it is. That's why Tucker's a successful manager, because he, ma- he, he makes players feel fucking <laughs> 100 feet tall, mate. That's, yeah. a good, that's, a, that's why he's such a good manager, mate. mate you, might, you might have seen it when we were, uh, we were all coming on after the 45 minutes, so there was like nine years or something going on. And Tucker's like, right, right, lads, he's going on. And he's got his bit of paper with these names on it. And I see him looking at everybody and he's like, right, you, you going for, um, who were you going for? And he was just on there like that. Um, you going for him. And he ended up putting 12 players on to start the second half. It's <laughs> 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 funny you talking about, um, I've taken a piss at me earlier with uh, saying I could referee. The boy who was refereeing the day was actually on my course when I did the referee's course. No, boy Jamie, but uh, Jamie's like, um, Tucker, you've got you've got twelve players on the park here. Oh, wow. like, oh dear, dear, yeah. he's like right, these half. Oh, brilliant! Because uh, I that was another thing I wanted to see on the thing we Will Sewell, Sewell, I think it is. He's scoring goals for fun for logs. Me, I wanted to get in there, mate, because I, I had I had did. that in my head. I had that. he's scoring goals for fun for logs, and logs are the ones that have really had. Much of a shout is, but I just I just want to get that in at the end, mate. No, quite right, quite right. Well done to him. Um, that'll bring us to, to an end. Everybody, watch our um, episode on Wednesday with Southie for St. Carrox and Sean Kenny from our dear. Uh, I'd, I'd say it's one of the one of the best ones I've done in a while as well, mate. It was really good, one. Nah, it's a right good, it's a right good football chat. So, it is, so I think I think that people will enjoy it. So. 
there's a cut of you laughs and that in it as well. But apart from the laughs, it's it's two good fo- two good football guys that are switched on in the game talking about talking about their grade and the conference and stuff like that. So I definitely get a bash. Nah, that'd be good, Gene. Um, before we finish up, right, so I've dropped the shoulder right and the ball went that way and I just curled into the top corner with posting and it was beautiful. Big Stephen Grinley's just swinging his hand in. I was like, I don't... Is that who was in goal? Aye. Oh, mate, that is probably the worst thing that's ever happened to Grinley in his career, mate. I'm telling you that right now. I couldn't believe it, mate. I, I was... I, when I seen it on Twitter, mate, I, I, I couldn't stop laughing, mate. I was actually laughing, mate. I couldn't stop. I thought, I thought it was a misprint, mate. I thought there must have been two Paul Gordons. I thought, I thought that somebody's going to wind me up. I didn't know what was happening. It was just a bit of quality, just a bit of me being me, but don't worry about it. Me, I can't. Mate, I just enjoy your, enjoy your night, mate. And all that. Yeah, I don't like to talk about these things, mate. It's not about me. It's just it's a good cause for a big guy and all that. Day. That's all it was. It was excellent to celebrate John's career like that. Way a great goal for me. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. End the show, mate. Aye, that's us done. Right, everybody, cheers for watching. Have yourselves a good week. Right, right see you later. <laughs> Bye.